Welcome back to the lab guys. Today I'm going to be doing a quick video on how to access ILO. Well, I guess in my case ILO 2 and you know, that's going to be what I'm showcasing here. And yes, it is another acronym. So stick around to figure out what that acronym stands for and how to access it. How to access ILO. You know, before I, I, I jump into accessing ILO, let's go ahead and actually talk about what an ILO is. All right, an ILO is a way of actually going ahead and remoting into a device. And what it stands for is integrated lights out. And basically the way to think of it is, if you ever heard of an iDRAC, which is Dell, or IMM, Integrated uh, Machine Management, which is IBM's way of doing it, these are all different ways for us to actually remote into the server and sit there and basically act like we're virtually there on the console in front of it. We can watch it all the way from the top of its boot, doing post sequence, checking memory, all of that. We can actually go in and press keys. We can do things. And this is very important. So that way, whenever we're having to do firmware updates remotely, we're having to check on things, say system crash, there's any issues going on. We can go ahead and actually control the machine. We can reboot it, look at what's going on. And the other great thing is that you can actually pull logs and other health stats that are very important, especially if you're trying to work with a vendor and get those logs up there. So let's go ahead and get into this. All right. So the first thing you need to do is go open up Internet Explorer. I know Internet Explorer. Listen, this is ILO 2. All right. Now, if you're on the newer versions of ILOs, this kind of applies for the same things. Um, you don't need Internet Explorer. Thank God a lot of the newer versions of ILOs uh, all are fantastic and <laughs> use HTML5 and make it very easy. But in this case, I'm going to be going to ILO 2 and we're going to be accessing it through Internet Explorer. Now, make sure that your ILO is up to date. It needs to be on version, I believe, 2.25 or above to really make sure you're actually able to access and use it properly. So here we go. First thing we want to do, open up Internet Explorer, as I was saying. The next thing you want to do is find the IP of your system. Now, that's a very interesting thing that you bring up because there's there's a few different ways you can actually find it. All right, the, one of the ways you can figure out what your ILO IP is is by rebooting your system. I know that's terrible. What if you, what if you can't reboot it and you don't know? Well, for, in the new days, you can actually go ahead and there's a file that you can install on hosts, and even in the old days, there's other add-ons you can install that allow you to manipulate the config file that the ILO holds. So you can actually use like an FTP or WinSCP system to actually grab the IP. Now that's a whole nother video. I'm going to go ahead and recommend the easiest way for you doing it is most likely to reboot that system. Move all the hosts you can off of it, reboot it, all right, and be there in front of it, write down the IP. This IP could be set with DHCP, allowing, you know, it to get an IP, whatever you want. Don't really recommend that. I would recommend setting to static so that way if it's set to a static, when you set it up, when you put it in production, you can go over, just always look at your you know, notes, your documentation, log in, get in, happy days. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to log in to my system. All right. It's going to come up. It's going to say the site's not secure. That's fine. Go onto the web page. Here we are. Now, before we even log in, one of the key things you're going to want to do, and I already did, is actually go up here. Let's go to compatibility view settings, and you're going to want to go ahead and add that IP address and add that system. Now, normally you'll see the site up there if it's not already added. Go ahead and click add, add it in. Once you click close, most likely it'll reload this site. That's perfectly fine. Let it do that. Then we're going to go ahead and log in. And boom, we are now in ILO. This is what the ILO is. This is integrated lights out. This is how you actually can manage the machine. If you notice right now, standby off system's not doing anything i can click this button it'll reload uid the little blue light that's on indicating hey i'm remotely in it i'm working on it easy as that i can also click this look do i want to power it on boom yeah i want to power it on watch give it just a second this is going to reload now it's booting really awesome so like i was saying we can remotely manage and do things it tells us the name what it's running what users logged in such as that, the next thing, the big thing, you can actually remote control. So, I'll show you all of this real quick. Boom. Let it connect. Let it do its thing. And we're in. So, right here, as you can see, we're waiting. It's going to be booting. That's it, guys. This is ILO. This is how you access it. This is how you navigate around it. Now, this is ILO 2. This does apply for ILO versions up above. So, feel free to take, you know, use any of this information here up above and actually use that to access ILO and be able to manage your systems. This is great, as I was saying, to be able to do anything remotely, you know, manage, figure out, troubleshoot. Also, you know, if you're ever working with HP and, you know, you need to send them logs, you grab in here, 
This is actually where you'll come in here and you'll actually grab them underneath administration, I believe. Yep. So, but that's it, guys. Just wanted to show you all ILO, how to access it, what it's used for, what it is. So, hope it was a helpful video. As always, guys, you know, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Make sure you click the little bell so you get updates when I'm releasing new videos. Follow me on Twitter, you know, and as always, I'll see you in the lab.